Hey you guys, it's me Laura and this week we are starting our um, My Father's World uh, exploring countries and cultures cycle. I'm really excited about it. I expect that this week will be a lot of trial and error figuring things out. It's a much lighter week according to the teacher's manual which is super nice because it always takes time to figure things out and kind of get them going. And today I'm going to show you, sorry, I'm out of breath, I've been running up and down the stairs. Uh, today I'm going to show you um, what I am putting in our book basket for probably the next couple weeks. I might switch a few out and then I can let you know how that worked and what happened with it. We plan to use the book basket actually before bed. So I will probably have things in here also that are not a part of the curriculum, just a few things that I feel are high interest for my kids but um, we especially want to make sure to have some things that go along with what we're learning in my father's world. And so my idea is that in the evening, when we're getting ready for bed, taking baths, cleaning up before bed, the kids can just look through those books and enjoy what they want. And then for story time, we'll pick things from there. I know right now um, the boys are reading different books with Arlen. I'm gonna start taking over that evening time and be doing that with them. Um, so we'll probably finish some of those up and I probably have way too many books for the book basket I think it's gonna take a little time to figure out the best Like how to how to work that so there's not too many books so that they're overwhelming um, And so that we can kind of freshen them up a little bit each week But that there's enough books that they really get variety and can kind of dig in and the idea of the book basket is not necessarily to read a book start to finish but you can kind of jump around and just um, they say it's like laying out a feast and they can nibble a little bit here and there. They can eat a whole course. They can kind of do as they'd like with the books. So let me show you what we're putting in this week. And I'm actually going to start with the books that have absolutely nothing to do with what we are learning about. But I'm putting them in there because I think my kids will enjoy them. This is for Lily, the going to bed book. We read this with both boys and they loved it. And I also am putting this in for Lily um, to kind of get to poke and lift flaps and do all sorts of, um, I guess there's not flaps to lift, but poke around and feel the different textures and things like that. She really enjoys that. So I have those for her. And then these are some books that I'm putting in just for my kids. Now this, this week is different. There's not really any chapter books in here. That's okay. We're going to have plenty of those coming right on up. Um, so it's okay to just take a few weeks and enjoy some picture books because they're good for everybody. So the first one, the boys had been begging me to get this book for them, so I did. So it's Curious George, so we'll get to read a good story together, I'm sure. And this book is really fun, The Napping House. I read this in school when I was little, I think. Um, they had it then, if I'm recalling correctly, looking at the copyright. Yeah, they did. And I used it when I was a teacher, and it's a great book. And this book I actually picked, A Tale of Two Beasts. It doesn't seem like it goes with the curriculum, but I felt like it did because as we are exploring cultures and countries, people see things differently around the world. And this book is about how there's always two sides to every story. And I feel like as we start to study people and cultures, it's important to understand that our perspective is not the only one. So I wanted to include that. And all the rest of these are either recommended in the, um, the, the book recommendations in the back of the teacher's manual or the ones I had or ones I thought of that I felt went really well with it. So this one is here and there and um, it talks about doing chores, for example, in different parts of the world, going to the grocery store in different parts of the world and just all sorts of stuff. This is probably not a book that we would read all the way through, but we might read a topic at a time or they might just find a few pages here and there. They've got buying groceries, playing outdoors, traveling to school, healthy eating, chores, new year, exercising, nature, festivals, getting around and looking through a window. So that's really fun. And then this is um, A Life Like Mine, How Children Live Around the World. And this is by DK, it's got a lot of pictures it's similar to the other one like how do people go to school um how do people work for a living so it's got lots of pictures again this is not one that we would sit down and read straight through um, the idea is kind of similar to the other one but it focuses on different places and it's got pictures um, this was actually recommended i'm not 100 percent sure why i mean i'm familiar with this book but this is miss from Fias. and so this is a good 
a good story. I remember this one from my childhood as well. I spent hours looking at these pictures. I guess she travels around the world and that's probably why, but um, so there's that one. And then this is, look at our world and it's just got different ecosystems and things like that, which very much go with the science. And this one's got really fun, like, Ooh, all the different levels. My kids are obsessed with the ocean, anything ocean. So anyway, <laughs> so there's that one. And then we have, this was recommended, How to Make an Apple Pie and See the World. I am not familiar with this book, so this is gonna be new to me when we read it. Um, and this I think was also recommended. It's a reading rainbow book somewhere in the world right now. And I might, when we read this one, I might see if I can find that reading rainbow episode on Amazon. We might watch that too, just for fun. Um, but it looks like it talks about what all is happening in the world at this time of day. So anyway, that'll be interesting. I'm not super familiar with that one. This one I have seen recommended in a lot of curriculums. I have not read it. It's called Me on the Map. And I think it starts with the girl's room and then just kind of goes out and out and out and out. Um, on the map and what the map looks like and where you are in relation to things. This one's also a reading rainbow book. So again, I might try and find that episode online so we can watch it. This is People by Peter Spear. Spire, I'm not quite sure how you say his name, but this one is also recommended by many curriculums. And it just talks about different people and things around the world. I mean, a lot of these books are very similar concept, just told in a different way. Now, I also happen to have some really fun activity books and sticker books that go with this theme. So I'm putting them in the book basket too, and we can spend time working on those if the kids want to. So this is a map activity pad. And so it's just got different, I don't know, games and activities. You can tear them off and do one at a time that are kind of have to do with various aspects of map reading. And you've got some that are like city maps. And then you have others that are like, um, like this one's a world map and all different kinds of maps. And so I thought that might be something fun just to put in for an option. And we also have the um, Us Born Around the World mazes. And again, just something really fun, mazes from different parts of the world. And I thought that that was something fun that we could do together. And we have this thicker picture atlas of the world. And again, this is just another fun way. And these I might actually keep in the book basket all the time or take them out for a while and put them back or rotate them out. I don't know, they're all going in right now though. Um, and then this is recommended, the great animal search that you put in the book basket and they have different um, pages that they recommend for each week. So like this week, ooh, they have this one and then another one from Great Britain or from Britain, they're both from Britain. And I'm not sure how that will work. The kids might get sick of it after a while and we might take it out. They might do all of them, like not necessarily in order. That's fine. We will just kind of go with that as we need to. And then they recommended this big book of animals, which I probably wouldn't have gotten if I knew exactly what it was, but I got it for really cheap <laughs> and that's okay. It has all these little mini books in it. So like this one's about horses and they have you pick out the animals that are about the different places. And so like this horses one, my five-year-old loves horses. So he'll probably like this. And then there's like a coloring page too that I'll put in there that he can do. And there's one about dogs and cats and frogs. Those are the ones they had us put in for this time. So we'll see, maybe, maybe they'll be a big hit. Maybe the kids will really like them, I don't know. But that's what we're putting in our book basket for this week. And we will see if that's too many books, if it's not enough books, how the kids respond. It's a little bit different. It, we're getting a start. We're gonna work all this out. So I will let you know how this went. And um, yeah, I, that's all I have for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you later, bye.